Every time I go to the mall, to the beach, wherever, I mean, I get, I get the friggin' stare downs all the time. Hey, look at that kid, he's got one leg, you know, and it's just, I just wanted to do something, but you know, I was humbling in crutches. I had one leg at the time, you know, what am I gonna do? Well, Mr. Perry, I'm sorry, but you're never going to walk again. This is not going to be fun. I'm like, if this is the way I'm going to live the rest of my life, like, that's when you start debating whether it's worth it or not. First of all, you know, if you're not an attractive guy, girls don't want to get with you anyways. So how attractive is it is that I'm in a fucking wheelchair and I can't get it up on my own anyways? I just don't want anyone to know. And I tried hiding it for probably about a week and you know, obviously everyone knew what happened, but I just didn't want anyone to know. I still, rem I can still hear the scream that I, s this, the scream I, I had when I, uh, this, how, how, how I screamed. Oh, it devastated him. Oh, this is the first time my daughter saw her daddy cry. But yeah, he was really, really hurt when, you know, his little girl was hurt because of lack of training. They get away with murder, that's it, down there. My son's just lucky he escaped with his life because that type of accident that he was in, they don't live to talk about. You know, we've been looking after them all their lives and then we, they go out to a job and we think that employers, because they're adults and they're businessmen or they're professionals, they'll look after them. because it was a 24-hour uh, shift work job. And I didn't like that because he was so willing. He was getting more and more tired. I may be the youngest here, and they don't usually hire 16-year-olds. There's danger. When you're tired, you misjudge. But I can handle it. I'm tough. Hurry, hurry, hurry. They, they were really pushing, let's get our production quota. So I didn't like that. He just went off to work and he was really proud of his job and we were all proud of him. His energies are, are a little bit fragile right now and, and he's, um, oh, there's probably several days a week that I'm driving down the road to this day and all of a sudden it hits me that he's in a wheelchair. And he's an adult now, you know. He, he should be living on his own and moving on with his life and now he's sort of stuck here for a little while. And I knew right then that I'd broken my back. And my, it was like my whole the rest of my life flashed before my eyes. You know, there was a couple of times when you're just like, why didn't it just kill me? You know? And I lost three fingers. I, I don't know any other girls who have lost their fingers at all. The only other thing I could really relate it to is a woman miscarrying. It's something no one will ever understand until you experience it for yourself. I love to be able to dance now, and I can't dance. So it's like those like things that I, I took for granted and I didn't do before my accident, and I can't do them now. I hate it. Like, I can't go to a bar because I see these people dancing and I go, fuck. You know, like, I missed out on that. Everything happened. Everything has to happen after something big accident happens, you know? That's when that's when everyone gets their heads together and, oh, okay, well, I guess, you know, we need to change things around here. It's never, it's never before, it's never before, you know, an 18-year-old loses its leg, you know? I was starting my working career, if you can call it that, uh, working at a pizzeria. I was thinking, you know, yeah, I'll go, I'll get a job, I'll work for a while, I'll see if that's what I want to do, but ultimately I do want to get back into school. I didn't really care what kind of job I got as long as I got something where I was making decent money. I dropped off my resume that day 
and literally that afternoon they called me back and said hey you want to start today and i was like sweet the guy with the most training gets the best job my parents were saying you know it's time for you to go and get a job start getting out in the working world for the rest of us out there that don't have a lot of training and are right out of high school you get the job that you think you can do and i knew i could do the job i wanted uh I wanted everybody that worked there to be surprised in how good and efficient that I worked. It was slack ass. Like it was, I think that's what probably appealed to me the most. For lack of a better term, I was everybody's bitch. If somebody told me they wanted something done, there's no way I was going to say no. Uh, I first started off waitressing there. You know, maybe I was, maybe I was trying to work too hard. Uh, then about a year later, I started cooking. Not realizing what I was getting myself into. I wanted to impress everybody. I wanted to show them that I could do it just as well as they could. So I was like, ah, oh, yeah, no worries. I can, I can work this job. Woke up in the morning, went to work. Uh, I was having a rough time trying to wake up that morning. And uh, the day was like any other. You know, I was cutting meat, prepping my dough and that. So we're going to start you off here. You're going to, you know, move the material around the yard, clean up, be on those kind of jobs. All the training I got was basically just passed down. My boss calls me up and asks me to come down to work for a few hours because somebody else had canceled and I wasn't actually scheduled to work that day. Well, the night of the accident, it was uh, a rainy and cold night. So it was quite intimidating. Um, lots of machines that I had to get in and clean up and dust off and, you know. Now eventually three o'clock rolled around, time to do my dough and that eventually went onto the machine. There's a roller on the bottom with a, a chain to, to move the, the roller. You know, they seemed unsafe, but I felt like that was an inherent part of the risk of any job. I felt like the things that I did were, that were dangerous were just part of the job. So I get back on the lift and I start trying to move this medite around again and uh, pull it out onto the lot and I stop. The load shift the slightest bit. It wasn't like it wasn't like it just started to shift and sheets were flying everywhere. It shifted just a little tiny bit. Finished cleaning up and I was ready to get off the machine, but this machine was uh, about six feet or higher in the air and I had to jump off. There wasn't a safe way of me getting in and out of the machine. And I looked down the, the laneway and I realized that I'm in a, a, an area of high traffic. So I, um, I'm like, okay, well I should move the forklift. I was putting dough into the top of the machine and uh, what you do is you just put it through again about halfway and it'll come out the bottom. And then I sat, I stood there and I assessed the situation like five times. I'm like, get back on the lift and I'll drop these things. Hey Jim. Yeah? Can you give me a hand? I had seen so many guys do this and apparently this is, you know, forbidden. You don't, you don't ever go near this is putting the forklift in gear when you're not in it. I didn't see anything wrong with it and I'd done it a few times myself. So what I do is I stand beside the forklift and the gear shift lever is on the steering column and I just tap the gear shift lever back into reverse. And I was ready to jump off and I had turned myself around. In the midst of that, I guess I slipped and I got my leg caught in the chain. I just got a pair of Brand new coveralls. I was gonna, you know, go to work and have a nice new clean uniform, and and you know, I'm getting sucked into this machine. Very scared getting sucked in. I knew, you know, this whole time I was trying to pull myself out of this, you know, but just Jesus, help! Help! there's no, there's no way. What's going on? You know, I'm looking at it and I'm going, all right. I don't know if these are gonna come down or not. So I'm like, all right, when I move out of the way, I. I'll tell you to drop the load. And he's like, all right. And it starts, I, I move it, I start moving backwards and it starts moving backwards. And the only thing I didn't notice was I, if I'd looked at the wheels, I would have seen that they were turned. At first I ran around to the other side because I was kind of confused. I was like, okay, how do I get back in this thing when it's moving? So 
it started moving, it starts moving backwards and I, I panic. I realized that the roller on it had dough stuck onto it, so I went to go and clean it. And I didn't quite feel it, it felt just like a tickle on, on my hand. It was the weirdest feeling I'd, I've ever felt. I think the only thing I was really scared of was when I was getting sucked in, as if I was going to be alive when it went through my head. I ran basically all the way around the forklift as it's moving. I'm, you know, I'm panicking. I'm, a lot of stuff's going through my head. I also didn't notice was there was a small puddle of hydraulic fluid about that big on, on the ground. And I think your mind so set on, no, this isn't happening. It's just too close to the, the roll feeder and my leg got caught in two pieces of metal that are about that close together, you know, I got sucked into about my thigh. And I said it as I turned around. Okay, drop it. And then finally, the sheet snapped my back and I could feel it just go into my back to the point where I couldn't feel my legs. The chain, it pulled my hand and I didn't quite feel it. I just thought something had touched me. I wasn't too concerned. I'm in the path of the forklift. I just had enough time to roll onto my back before... It was in slow motion how everything happened, and literally the rest of my life kind of flashed. I was like, so I screamed out of fear, out of anxiety, out of just, you know. I felt that nothing, you know, that I was all right. No. When I saw, you know, a light, and then that's it, the machine just stopped. I think maybe maybe it was uh, an angel from heaven, just... When I looked at my hand, I could see that there was parts of my hand missing. I, I could see the bone in my fingers, and I could see all the muscle around, all the fat. Um, it was almost like it was in a movie. <laughs> I, I felt like just... I felt like a baby again. I was just, I was laying there, I'm crying. I'm like, I'm not gonna walk again. I'm not gonna walk again. Thirty, forty-five seconds before somebody came out and uh, and, my, and it was my uncle. He came out and uh, started whipping the stuff off like it was toast. I could have saw, I could have looked up and saw my leg, but I was so scared to what it would look like to me, you know. Got into the ambulance. I got pretty scared at this point. Someone should call my mom. Yeah, we're gonna call your mom as soon as I want to talk to her. So I'm laying there on the table, and there's a whole bunch of doctors and nurses above me. What, what are they going to do to me? And what have I done to myself? And I'm like, all right, whatever. Are you listening to me? Maybe it's just what they do while you're, you know, while you're dealing with paralysis. I need you to wake up now. If that's fine, I'll deal with it. Wake up now. This time I don't know shit about paralysis. You're going to use a plastic tube that looks like this. Pull the sheets up. There's this fucking tube sticking out of my dick. You're going to have to get used to it. Yeah, and that's pleasant. You're going to stick it into your penis. Am I going to have to have this tube in me all the time? It's going to empty your bladder. Suppositories. Laxatives. You're going to take a lot of pills. I'm trying to learn how to get on the toilet. A bowel stimulator. Like, it's a total invasion of my privacy. You won't be able to do it on your own. This is not comfortable at all. You're going to have to get used to it. And this is your new wheelchair. 
My dad was just strong, steady, very calm. Here was my son, so proud to be driving a forklift. Didn't occur to me to ask myself, does he know what he's doing? How fast does it move, for instance? Is he competent in using this machine? They scoot around pretty quickly. How risky is it that he wasn't indeed paralyzed, you know, from the neck down or killed? I had to go and get uh, one of the bones cut down. I couldn't sleep in a room by myself. The second surgery I had was to have the, the nail bed removed in my pinky finger. I was in therapy for quite a while. I had that surgery done twice. I woke up many nights screaming. Uh, that was very painful. They didn't teach my son the safety. And I could have been scratched off this planet, right? That easily. He was sacrificing and jeopardizing his own safety. My life wasn't into anybody's hands. In a split second, your life can change forever. Oh, so I don't have to just worry about joyriding on Friday night. It was so preventable, it's ridiculous. I have to worry about when they go to work on Monday morning or, or after school. If they had given me the proper training. Uh, the workplace can be a really dangerous place. Make sure you know what what kind of training you need. I want parents to know that. Know your rights, know what, what is required of you and what is required of your employer. Well, nothing will ever bring her fingers back. If you don't know a machine and they expect you to use it, just say no. It's time to take a step back and, you know, look at the big picture. Say, I will not touch that machine until you train me properly how to clean it, how to use it, all the different parts that are on it. Yes, she did get a, a small settlement, but that's nothing. Her fingers would have been so, so much better. So much better.